my heart to do about honor, we started two weeks ago by talking about the honor that is due to our God. And we talked about honoring God, how we should honor God. I also mentioned that there's a component of honor, which is honoring people. So today, I'm going to talk a little bit about honoring people, and we started by honoring mothers here uh, in, in, the, in our church, because it's Mother's Day. And uh, every little thing uh, in life has to be learned. Some of you have babies, new babies. We have so many new babies here in our church. I'm just thrilled because we can put the nursery back to work. And it's exciting when we have a church full of babies. I, I just love to see those babies. Some of you, I know that you're trying to have your own babies. Others are considering other options. But we like to have babies in, in the house. It's very important. In a church, we also want to have babies. And what kind of babies we have? We have all sorts of babies. We have the natural babies, and then we have uh, baby Christians. <laughs> and some people are babies all their lives, so I hope it's not your <laughs> case. But uh, walking with God is a process of learning. That's why Jesus said you need to become like little children, like these ones, if you want to enter the kingdom. And, you know, babies do all sorts of things. They complain, they cry, they're upset. And uh, as babies grow, uh, eventually they will look at mom and they will call mom by her name. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Anne. Hi, uh, Ruth. And, and mom will say, no, you don't call me by my first name because I'm mom. <laughs> and, and so there, there's a, a kind of... Um, a boundary of respect that, that has to be uh, put in place. So respect is very important also for our spiritual growth. Now talking about honor with people, I would like to start by talking about honor in the family. And in Matthew chapter 15 verses 4 to 8, it says, For God commanded, honor your father and your mother, and he who curses or reviles or speaks evil or abuses or treats improperly his father or mother, let him surely come to his end by death. That's really strong. But you say, if anyone tells his father or mother what you will have gained from me, that is the money and whatever I have that might be used in helping you, is already dedicated as a gift to God, then he is exempt and no longer under obligation to honor and help his father or mother. So for the sake of your tradition, the rules handed down by your forefathers, you have set aside the Word of God, depriving it of force and authority and making it to no effect. You pretenders or hypocrites. Admirably and truly did Isaiah prophesy of you when he said, These people draw near me with their mouths and honor me with their lips, but their hearts Hold off and are far away from me. There's a special blessing for you and me when we honor our parents. There's a special blessing when we respect the protocol of honor that people around us deserve. Jesus gave also a deep teaching here because the Pharisees, the religious people, uh, they were saying, uh, if you want to skip the part of taking care of the old folks, you know, when they age, there was no social security in those days. There was no check from the government. So uh, all elderly people, they had to rely on, on the help of their children. And some of them will do something really nasty. But people do nasty things and they continue to do it today. They will give a small offering to the temple. And they will tell their parents, whatever money I had to give to you, I dedicate it to God. It's not that they will give all the money to God. But they will give some of the money and then they'll say, you know, I, I, now I'm free to do whatever I want. And mom, dad, you take care of yourselves. I don't like you anyways. Are you following me? So Jesus is using this example to talk about honor. And the issue here, it's not the money that is due to your parents. It's because they were misunderstanding things and they wanted to give to God the honor that is due to people. You know, people deserve also honor. There's levels of honor. When we give a hand clap of applause in this church, we give to God and sometimes we give to people. Hello? 
You know, some people say, oh no, we give all the applause, all the glories to God. Well, it's to God. He's in the first place. But people also deserve honor. And the first place where we need to understand honor is in the family. The Pharisees had different rules, traditions, and they had an appearance of holiness, but they lacked honor. They honored with their lips, but their heart was somewhere else. It's like those people that honor you, but in between their teeth, teeth they say, if I can bite, I will. <laughs> yes. Do you know people like this? Yes. They talk to you all with smiles, and then they backstab you. So that, that's the situation of the Pharisees. They told their followers, if you ded dedicate whatever is due to God, you, you vow to God, and if you vow to God, you're uh, exempt of honoring people. And that's false. We need to learn how to honor people. God doesn't want the honor reserved for your parents. He wants a different kind of tribute. And uh, we know that uh, we need to give Caesar what belongs to Caesar and God what belongs to God. Those are two different things. So in our relationships, we learn to honor father and mother. Now let me just talk uh, briefly, I don't want to go into uh, in depth into this uh, matter, but some churches, they even call their pastors father. Uh, how many of you came from a church like this? All right, just a few. Some churches, the pastor is called Father. And sometimes people come to me and call me Father Tony. And, and, I, and I say, oh, uh, well, skip the Father thing. But, but you, you, know, you know that that church is right in, in one sense? Is that the pastors should represent on earth the role of our Heavenly Father. So when you disrespect your pastor, you're disrespecting God. And now this is freezing because you think I'm asking you to respect me. But I'm just teaching you something very important. Because if you want to be blessed, honor. If you want to be cursed, dishonor. Because honor brings everything up and dishonor brings everything down. If you dishonor people with your words, if you don't learn the principle of honor, God is not going to bless you. And God will say, yes, you're giving me honor, what about my children? I have three kids and sometimes they argue. They don't argue much now because the father is in the house. And the father will not allow the kids to go over a certain limit. And I know some of you are experts in this area. Some of you that have five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine kids. You know, sometimes kids argue and the father comes and stops the argument. Why? Because children should respect the authority of the father. Some will not respect, and this is why we have so many broken homes, so many broken families, and so many things that are broken. Like a president now in the United States that declared that it is the will of God for homosexuals to be married. He not only declared that gay marriage is right, but he went to the blasphemous statement of involving the will of God in this. So you may like him, I like him, but I don't like what he's saying. Because when you break the level of respect between humans, you break everything. Marriage is intended to be between a man and a woman. Why? Because in the beginning, man was one. And God separated woman. And now we get together in a relationship of honor and respect. And now the two shall become one again. Are you following me? So I'm not preaching against homosexuals. I'm just telling you the truth because I have nothing against, you know, choices that people do. It's their choice. Now, me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's my choice. Now, let's move a little bit further in terms of relationships. So, honor your father and your mother. Now, what about honoring other people? What about honor in relationships? Jesus gave some teaching about this, and it's called the parable of the wedding feast. And in that parable, in Luke 14, 7 to 11, he said, now he told the parable to those who were invited, 
when he noticed how they chose the places of honor, saying to them, when you're invited by someone to a wedding feast, do not sit down in a place of honor, lest someone more distinguished than you be invited by him, and he who invited you both will come and say to you, give your place to this person. And then you will begin with shame to take the lowest place. But when you're invited, go and sit in the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, Friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. This parable is about honor. And it's about the honor that people deserve. It's not about the honor that God deserves, but it's about the honor that you and me deserve. And we can interpret it in different ways. Uh, as humans, we all have a desire to receive honor. You do something right, and you want someone to affirm, you did a good job. If no one affirms, eventually, you will stop doing what you're doing. So it's very important to bring affirmation to whatever we do. And Jesus is giving the example of the wedding feast. Now, let me just move you uh, two months back to a funeral that was televised all over the world uh, when uh, Whitney Houston was in a church uh, there in, in uh, New York, uh, New York area, and there was CNN and all the news reporters, everyone wanted to get into that church. It was a small building, a little bit bigger than ours, and uh, 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 all the, the, those famous people are there, and someone enters the church, which was her former husband, the fellow who introduced her to drugs, in fact. And he enters the, the, the church and tries to sit down at the front seat. I don't know if you follow this on TV, but it was kind of a ridiculous, a ridiculous situation. Because someone came and they told, you can sit there, but the nine people, the gang you brought with you, had to sit at the back. And you know what he did? He left the church. And everybody was talking about it, and it was one of the things that marked that funeral, was the fact that someone who was related to the person being honored, because that's the purpose of a funeral, is to bring honor to that, per to that person that already departed, that already went somewhere. So he had to leave because someone told him, you're not allowed to sit there. That's pretty shameful. But you see, he did something that is not in the parable. Because in the parable, Jesus is trying to teach disciples. And he's saying, if someone tells you to go to the back seat, you go to the back seat and you sit there. You don't just leave. But some people, when they don't have a humble heart, they leave. They say, well, if I don't have honor, I'm gone. If I don't have this, uh, you know, if people don't put me on the pedestal, I'm not here. Now, in this situation, this parable, notice these, these, these uh, little things. First, all are invited. Jesus is talking about his kingdom. And he's saying, all are invited. So all of us, we were invited to the feast. And when you arrive to the feast, to the banquet, you need to choose where you're going to sit. It's like when you came to church today, some of you, you have reserved seats. How many of you have reserved seats? <laughs> Okay, <laughs> all right, and you might arrive here and you see something in your, someone in your seat or something there, say, what is this? This is my seat. Some people even go to the point when they arrive to church, they see someone they, they don't know, and they say, what are you doing in my seat? Can you move forward? Can you move to the side? That's my seat, I've reserved it. I've been here for 30 years. <laughs> well, let's move on with this message. But, but, <laughs> but what Jesus is saying is that also, there's people with different le levels of position. There's different positions. And he uses, the, the Bible uses the word distinct, distinguished. The word distinguished. So there's someone, there's people that have more distinction than others. They're all at the wedding. They're all enjoying. They're all eating at the same food. But some have more distinction than others. So when we go to a wedding, I usually ask, where's my table? So last weekend I was in a, in a wedding and they gave me table number one. And I, I thought, wow, I'm really a big shot here. <laughs> then to realize it was in front of the speaker. <laughs> you know, the, the, you know, the, the, not the person, the, those big speakers. Those are big speakers. I thought, oh my God. 
Can I have number 32, please? <laughs> but uh, you know what I mean. People give you honor, and it was a way of honoring me. They, they, they said, we want you to have table number one. And I said, well, great, I have ta table number one. Now, someone comes and says, I want to sit there. And the waiter comes and says, well, I'm sorry, sir, you're on table 132, right there at the back. What are you going to do? Are you going to move there? Or are you going to exit the place? That's your choice. But Jesus said this, this very important thing. Don't try to promote yourself in order to receive honor. Because whenever you do it, God Himself will rearrange things. And He will come with a person of distinction and He will correct things. It's like if I come here to my brother and friend Philippe and he's right here at the front and don't move Philippe, bouge pas. <laughs> Mais si je te demande Philippe, est-ce que tu peux te placer avec le fauteuil en arrière? Non, non, bouge pas. Est-ce que tu obéis? Bien sûr. I, I know you will obey, but some certain people, if I tell, you know, can you go to the back seat? No. <laughs> no. And the lesson in this human relationship, this is not just applied to church or to church life. This is in all realms of life, in your workplace, in your school, in your job. If you're humble, if you do your job right and you're humble, you're going to be promoted. If you try to force yourself, put your foot on top of anyone's head in order to climb, then you're in a dangerous situation. Hello, are you following me? Yes. This applies also to your family. In a family there's levels of authority. According to God's word, the man should be the authority of the house. Should be, I said. He's not always. But he should be. And when, when men learn how to be the authority of the house, women are happy. Yeah. Thank you, my wife, <laughs> for that. <laughs> you will be in trouble without that. <laughs> it's in all realms of life. So honor to others is a really important thing. Now, uh, Jesus, uh, he said also, let me move a little bit further. I, I forgot the slides. And Romans 12, 10, it says, Love one another with brotherly affection. Out to one another, showing honor. Amen. Jordan, I need to outdo you and I don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> because many times you outdo me. <laughs> and when you show honor, when you show honor, you receive that honor and you need to think, how am I going to outdo the honor that I received? I want to do it even better. And you see, on, when, honor, when the honor protocol is in effect, it's like a snowball of blessing. God is in the house. God is in the business of humbleness. I have a scripture I'm not going to read to you, but some of you take notes. Read it in James chapter 4, when it talks about quarrels and fights between brothers, and it, where it says, God resists the proud, but He gives grace to the humble. And, and this matter of, of honor touches, touches our pride. Because when I receive honor, my pride shows up. And you might say, oh no, I'm very humble, I'm, I'm so proud of being humble. Yeah. And some people are like this, oh, all glory is to God. But, but deep inside you're saying, yes, yes. Because it's natural in us. It's natural to, uh, you know, to get honored. But what are you going to do with that honor? We need to bring that honor to the feet of Jesus. And even if it's not in a public place, but in your time alone with God, when you receive honor, just say, God, I receive this honor. I'm pleased. I'm so blessed you honored me, God. And I want to do something special. I want to give my crown to you, God, because I know it doesn't belong to me. And if you have this attitude, you're ready for heaven. If you don't have this attitude, you're heading ready for hell. And that hell will start here on earth and will continue. Because if we don't understand the protocol of honor, we miss something very important in our Christian life. First, we miss the respect and the honor that we owe to one another. 
The Word of God says, oh, nothing except honor. So when, when the Bible gives this teaching about honor, we need to understand really well what, what is it talking about. Now I'm going to finish my message and I would like to go uh, to this scripture in John chapter 13. And I debated today if I was going to do a visual demonstration of this and uh, I, I'm not going to do it today but, but I would like to do this uh, one of these uh, days. Uh, something that uh, we used to do in, in churches that we pastored. Uh, once in a while we had a, a service uh, in which uh, myself, my wife, the pastors will wash the feet of our disciples. And we did this uh, very, very often. And why? Because we want to show that we love and that people deserve honor. And Jesus was the one who wanted to give a visual demonstration of this matter. And in John 13, verse 3, it says, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, the Father had what? Given all things. What is all things? All things. All things. So he knew he had what? All things into his hands. And he had come to, to God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped uh, around him. Um, verse 6. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? And Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but afterwards you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no share with me. The protocol of honor. If I cannot wash you, you have no share with me. What is the teaching in this passage of scripture? Jesus was a prophet. Prophets do visual things. And as a prophet, you, you know, we can argue on all the aspects of this parable. Today I want to focus just on one. Honor. Jesus came and he had to bow down to those people. He put the towel of the servant and he was washing the feet of his disciples. They were in shock. Peter was particularly shocked. And he said, no, you are the master. You are the Messiah. You are Lord. You're reversing things. I should wash your feet. Not the opposite. But Jesus wanted to teach something really important. It's not just about humbleness. It's about honor. And also, listen to me, some of them were dirty. Because Judas was in the crowd. And he washed his feet too. And scripture tells exactly that. He knew that there was one there that really had needed washing. Jesus allowed him to be in the middle of his leadership. Jesus allowed him to be there because there's a purpose even for people that are traitors. And now this is very silent. No one wants to be in the role of the traitor. But Jesus bowed down to Judas and washed also his feet. Now, this was something very practical and the ritual of washing feet was something common in those days, especially if they were in a wealthy and a rich house. So it, it shows that they were in a rich house because most houses were just, you know, dust. They didn't have carpet or tiles or uh, wood floors, you know, life was very different. They, they had kind of shacks with dust, they would put water so they wouldn't have the dust flying around, but wealthy houses they were paved. And travelers will come from the, those dusty streets and they'll have the lowest of the lowest of the servants doing that job, washing their feet, so that they will not contaminate the house. So the ritual of washing, it's not just about humbleness. It's about cleansing. And we all need to be cleansed. 
myself included. We all need Jesus Christ to cleanse us from our iniquities and from our sins. And if you think that you don't need cleansing and you tell the Lord, not me, cleanse that brother there and that sister because I'm already clean, Jesus says, you have no part with me. Because all of us need to be washed by the sweet hands of Jesus. Amen. Amen? Amen. This talks about honor, about service. In John, uh, the same passage, it says a little bit further, verse 12, when he had washed their feet and put on his other garments and resumed his place, he said to them, do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, so I am. If then I am your Lord and teacher, and I have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do that. Now, this is the conclusion of my message today. I'm talking about blessing. Do you want to be blessed? Do you really want to be blessed? In our relationships, and again, this is not just church relationships. This is in your workplace. This is in your school. This is wherever you, you're uh, functioning. You need to have the heart of the servant. And even if people are there to betray you, you wash their feet. Because you know what? God is going to bless you. God is truly going to bless you. And He said, if I'm your teacher and I do this, shouldn't you do the same? How often people feel offended with one another, and instead of going and serving and washing the feet, they backstab the person, they write emails, they write letters to other people, they do all sorts of evil behavior. Because it's what it is. It's evil behavior. Instead of just being humble and saying, I want to help you. I don't wash your feet. Listen, church, I'm talking about being Christian. I'm not talking about belonging to the association of the South Shore community. I'm talking about being a Christian, a child of God, redeemed by the blood of Jesus, servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, and willing to say, I am washed in the blood, I will obey the Lord, I will do what is right, and I want to wash your feet. The final lesson in this teaching is the protocol of honor. Some people around them, they want everyone to wash their feet. But they're not willing to serve. That's the wrong hand. I, I've had people, sometimes they call the church, Oh, do you have a youth program? What do you do? Do you do this, this, this and that? Oh, you don't? So I'm going to another church. Great. Do you, do you want instructions how to get there? I'll Google map it for you. You know, because this is the wrong attitude. You're here to serve. I'm here to serve. I'm not here to boss anyone. I'm here to serve. But you see, as having a position more distinguished than others, sometimes the Lord will tell him, will tell me, move that person to a lower table and bring that person to a higher position. And I have to obey. I'm not the owner of the wedding. I'm just here to serve. And servants sometimes do, do things that we don't like to do. Sometimes we need to wash things we don't like to wash. Sometimes we have difficult circumstances of life. But God will also give grace. And I would like to conclude by reading James 4, 6. He gives more grace. Therefore it says, God opposes the proud. But He what? I couldn't hear, I'm sorry. Do you need grace? It's when you're weak that His grace is sufficient. If you're proud, there's no grace. There's no grace. God really opposes the proud person. But He gives grace to the humble. So you see how important is the protocol of honor? Because 
I've, I've seen Christians that say, oh, I don't know what's happening. I'm not being blessed and I have these problems and now I've lost my job and now I don't know what to do. And now uh, my mother-in-law told me this and now my father-in-law told me that and I, I'm going to lose my house and I don't know what to do. I mean, you know, why don't you start serving others and honoring others? Start by that horizontal relationship and God who is on high will see the way you treat others and He will say, now I want to bless you. Now I want to give you my grace. God will always, always, always resist the proud. And sometimes He resists to the point of death. You see, when, when we read the first scripture, if you don't honor father and mother, your, puni your, your punishment is what? Death. death. That's really severe. So you mean if I don't give honor to people, I can be punished by death? The Old Testament has the practical truth that is a spiritual truth in the New Testament. Spiritual death will come to people that don't honor others. So start by honoring people. You know when we get to, get to the parking lot, go and open the door to your wife. Open the door to someone. You know, next time you, you enter to the, into the convenience to pay for your gas, hold the door for the person that comes. Uh, you know, uh, they are steal away, but hold the door to that person. Learning those little things, how to give honor to others. You go to a hospital, enter the elevator, ask everybody, you know, uh, what is your floor? I know you're not the elevator person, but you're here to serve. You're here to serve. Is this good or what? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. So give a hand of applause to the Lord. Let us all stand.